What's up guys and welcome back to the Realistic Career Mode of Wrexham. This is episode number 42 and the start of life in the championship. Yes, as you can see the candidate here, our first three games of this season will be Sunderland away at the Stadium of Light and then our first home fixture in the championship is a Welsh derby against Cardiff. Cannot wait for that one and then we round off the episode against Coventry, a fellow championship side in the Carabao Cup. Now in the last episode we prepared our squad, we got ready for battle as we're going to take on the English second tier. We brought in six signings, five of them off the free agency market, and then we made one signing from a club that was uh, Alfie Devine. And a few of them, you're going to see them make their debuts here. I'm also going to start showing the opposition's lineup. I know it's their predicted lineup, but I feel like maybe you guys want to see um, the, the opposition we're facing as well. So I'm going to show them the team. And uh, I, I just want to say a massive thank you for the comments. They keep coming through, and you see one there from Calvin who said uh, we just earned a new subscriber. He's a big fan of the series he's, and he's going to uh, go and watch it all the way through after joining us at episode 41. Uh, and that's all the way from Canada as well. I absolutely love that. So thank you. And um, you know what? I, I feel like it's nice to know I'm not the only one on career mode that loves to binge a career mode series. So let me know in the comments right now. Have you been following since the start, since episode one, or have you joined late into the series and you've binge a few of the episodes? Let me know in the comments where you are well going into the first game of the episode there would be a couple of debuts uh foddering him in between the sticks uh, he's going to be our number one alfie divine playing in the center mid alongside koulibaly four new players on the bench and despite bringing in arguably stronger players the likes of elliot lee aaron hayden will keep their places for now uh, we also line up with two former sunderland uh wingers uh Jewis and bennett and uh, Patrick Roberts on either wing where it would be the Black Hats who would take an early lead Jack Clark the former Tottenham and Leeds winger sitting down foddering 10 minutes in a really nice finish from the player who has so much potential he's lighting up the championship right now but then there's a lot of question marks over whether he can do it in the Premier League obviously Sunderland played Newcastle in the FA Cup a, 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 a derby that we hadn't seen in years and um, Sunderland were played off the park and Jack Clark not really much was seen of him so question marks are still to be had whether he is Premier League quality but right now this season in in real life he's smashing the championship and uh, in this game he's uh, got his side off to the perfect start giving his team a 1-0 lead 10 minutes in and I'll be honest it was all Sunderland in this first half they were peppering us foddering him having to make a couple of saves we made a sub at half time Alex Lowry came on for his debut taking the place of Elliot Lee and then almost from kickoff uh, Sunderland uh, their their player Barr ran through before he was substituted and uh, forced foddering him into a good save before 15 minutes on the clock a shot that <laughs> seemed to absolutely just p-roll past foddering him comes back off the post and the keeper collects but the pressure didn't stop there from the hosts and Jack Clark well somehow beat Fodderingham to this I'm not quite sure how Fodderingham didn't get to this I was holding down why looking at the replay it felt like the game sort of halted his run even though I was holding I was holding why to bring him out Jack Clark slides in gets there gets his and Sunderland's second goal of the game and that should wrap it up as uh, Matete bursting into the box his shot goes or cross goes into the side netting and the referee blows full time. So a tough one to start off the uh, to start off life in the championship. Sunderland dominated us from minute one to minute 90 and won via a Jack Clark brace. Um, I actually don't think we had a shot in that game, which is quite bad. Um, it, it, the team felt very blunt from the midfield onwards. Um, didn't see much of our attacking players at all. Koulibaly and Devine were pretty outrun in the midfield. The defence I thought was pretty solid though. Josh Earl was great again. The wing backs were great and following him was decent in net as well. So as we look at the table, one game, one defeat. Fellow promoted sides Rotherham and Plymouth also tasted defeat on the opening day whilst Bournemouth 4-0 victory over Bristol City as they look to secure a place back in to the Premier League the first time of asking. And um, Bournemouth uh, on Monday night completed one of the best comebacks I've seen for a long time. I feel like we haven't seen this kind of comeback uh, in a Premier League game in, in, a, in a couple of years now. 3-0 down they were at home to Luton and they came back on 1-4-3. It was an absolutely incredible game. Both teams going head-to-head, -head, blow for blow and that defeat left Luton in the bottom three alongside fellow uh, promoted side Sheffield United and Burnley. Let me know in the comments right now, guys, with about 10 games to go, who do you think is going to get relegated from the Premier League this season? 
Will we see the bottom three that are now, who are the sides that went up last season, will we see them go back down? Will the likes of Everton, Forest, Brentford, will they get dragged into the scrap? Let me know in the comments who you think is going to go down. I personally think it will be the three promoted sides from last season going back down. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. But yeah, what a game that was for Bournemouth. As uh, we take on uh, just we take on Cardiff now in the second game of the episode, we rejected a couple of loan bids for Humphreys. Nathan Lloyds wants the chance to uh, prove himself again and earn that number one spot. I will give him a start against uh, commentary in the cup. And uh, we and we actually accept a, a loan offer from Standard Liège for Lloyd Humphreys. Now we were looking to loan him out. I know, as you know, I normally like to keep my um, my youth academy players on loan in the UK or Ireland. But this one was a really intriguing one. A Standard Liège, you know, a, a decent, well-established Belgian side. I felt like that was actually a really good move for him. So Humphreys is going to go to the Belgian League for a year and uh, apply his trades over there well heading into this game it would be cardiff to visit the first championship team well not the first championship team but the first team to visit us as we are a championship side and it is a welsh derby the fans were up for this the race course ground was full it was sold out the atmosphere was buzzing and despite losing our opening game the fans were hopeful that we could get a result here and cardiff drew their opening game to blackburn 1-1 they are now led by uh well the captain by veteran aaron ramsey as they li line up in a similar 4-2-3-1 well the first half was fairly quiet cardiff you know the established premier league side were were on top in this one just a couple minutes to go before the uh halftime break mullins finds mendy and uh, Patrick Roberts here, oh, chest the ball, but his shot crashes off the post. That would have been a perfect way to end the half. As Shea Yojo looks to break, but Paul Mullen with a defensive effort. Love that from him. Alfie Devine, the youngster, what's he going to do here? Oh, he's going to have a shot, Alfie Devine! Oh, my word. What a way to get your first goal for a club. What a way to get the club's first goal at this level. Alfie Devine, we said when we brought him in, he is going to be a superstar, just 20 years old. This kid is a talent, 70 rated. We brought him in for £3 million from Lille and he has just rubber stamped his name on this derby as uh, there was no goalkeeper in that replay. That was a bit weird. What a goal, Alfie Devine. Incredible work from Paul Mullin to work back, win the ball back off Shea Yojo. He plays it to Alfie Devine. And I mean, talk about a first goal in the league. Holy. As the ref blows for half time, that was the practically the final kick. And I had to get the replay out here. I, I forgot that Patrick Roberts even hit the post. Mendy with a great pro, with a great cross. Roberts chests it down beautifully. Got ahead of the keeper and his shot crashes off the post. And then look at this from Paul Mullin. Great defensive work rate. And then this angle is going to be beautiful. Alfie Devine about 25 yards out. Whip curl. But oh my God, the power. It was a beautiful finish from the youngster. And we lead this one 1-0. One the home fans went crazy. As we see here in the second half, Cardiff looking to um, continue their dominance in the game, to be honest. That was one of the a, a rare few attacks for us going forward. Josh Earl with a couple of big tackles. He's been a fantastic to start off this season. And then with 20 minutes to go on the clock, Jewison Bennett finds Elliot Lee. And Elliot Lee bags our second of the game. And hopefully now that should see us through. Jewison Bennett picking up his first assist of the season. Gets the ball receiving that wide, cuts inside, and it was a nice inverted run by Elliot Lee, who actually lets the ball run across him, and he fires across the keeper and gives us a 2-0 lead with just over 10 minutes to go. And uh, Cardiff continuing their domination, but they can't find a way past Wes Fotheringham as uh, we make a couple of substitutions, and Alfie Devine was a standing ovation from the race course ground. What a goal, what a talent this kid is. It could be an absolute steal at just £3 million. Alfie Devine Welcome to Wrexham, my man. Well, from the car, uh, from the corner, Cardiff play it short. They aren't giving up on this one yet. No, they aren't going down without a foot. And Siopsis with the shot. It was actually a, a shot that um, Fotheringham got a hand to, but he couldn't keep it out. And Calvin made a great comment there. Um, I actually struggle um, defending against the AI, especially on this um, difficulty, because I feel like they just ticky tack of the ball around the box so hard. And uh, Calvin said that I should, um, when I'm pressing R1, I should release it just before the player gets to the attacker. And that way he'll make the tackle rather than jockeying. So Calvin, thank you for that tip. I will definitely try and implement that 
in the next time I'm defending. Well, despite us passing up the opportunity right at the death to uh, double our lead and make it 3-1, Elliot Lee looking to uh, return the favour to Jewis and Bennett and square the ball. The defender blocked it out. We do see this one out. A 2-1 win. We secure our first points on the board and what a way to do it in a Welsh derby, eh? What a goal from Alfie Devine. Elliot Lee made it too and we have our first points on the board. You love to see it as Plymouth and Rotherham continue to struggle to defeat from two. But we are on the board now, three points. And um, it's so important when you're a newly promoted side to get those points early doors. I don't want to be in a relegation scrap and looking up. I want to, I'd want i rather be looking over my shoulder as Bournemouth score four for the second game in a row. My word, they're looking like they're going to be straight back in the Premier League. Anyway, we reject a bit for Dexter Riley. Uh, we do want to send the centre back out on loan, but Huesca's um, offer... Uh, it's just not a realistic destination, so uh, we reject that one. And then uh, Lloyd Humphreys has his loan move confirmed to standard Liège. I think uh, I think it's going to be a good move for him, actually, and hopefully he goes up for a few ratings and next year he becomes a prominent part of this team. Well, a couple of players come to us. Um, Alan Brown saying that he could have made a difference in that game. I just don't think so. Brown, honestly, I'm still trying to sell you, but we haven't got any suitable offers. And then Ryan Morris asking if he can get some game time in the next match, which he will do. Before uh, before we head into that game, though, a couple of additions we're going to make. Mason Guest, our sixth free agency signing, left-footed right back, but he's got a five-star week for 18 years old. We offer the 18-year-old uh, a four-year deal, 65 rated, but he looks a decent acquisition and a backup for Ryan Christie. Like we said, we give him a four-year deal. He takes the number 13. Unlucky for some, but I feel like Mason is a, it's another shrewd signing off the free agency market. Guys, honestly, if you have a, a tight budget, do not be afraid to look at the free agents because there are some gems on there. And although, you know, his rating isn't the best, I feel like with Christy retiring next season, Guest will get some game time this year and hopefully will have his rating up. So for next season, potentially, he could be our starting right back. And joining guest in uh, in signing on uh, on this day would be another free agent, Tom Williams, um, one year older, nineteen years old, sixty five rated, left footed striker. He looks like he's got a lot of potential. His stats look great, and as you know, uh, Tom Bradshaw is out for six months. Uh, Ollie Palmer is now retired, so we only have one out and out striker, and that's Paul Mullen. And I do not want to run Paul Mullen into the ground. I want to have a backup option. So Tom Williams, we sign him into the club. He wants to take the number nine, which you know obviously is now vacant after Ollie Palmer retired. I thought I'll change it, and then I thought, you know what? I rate the kid's confidence. You know, 19 years old, but he wants that number nine. He's look if he's going to give us um, a go, if he's going to give Paul Mullen a run for his money up top, I am here for it. So yeah, Tom Williams and Mason Guest signed uh, uh, to Wrexham and become our 7th and 8th signings of the summer. And those two will be straight into the squad to face Coventry um, as we make 11 changes for this Carabao Cup tie. Guest and Williams come in. There are first starts in a Wrexham shirt for Lowry and Vata, uh, whilst Chambers and Fish make their debuts and George Evans captains the side. Coventry, one win and one draw from their opening two games, obviously lost the playoff final last year in real life. They'll be looking at to make the playoffs again this year. And uh, in that uh, in that season, actually, in real life, when, the, when Coventry were making the playoffs, in that season, these two teams met in the FA Cup. Wrexham travelled to Coventry. I think it was on a midweek game because I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember it being in the evening, I think it was. But they played out a crazy cup game. Wrexham turning over Coventry 4-3 in a mad cup game. Um, at that time, Wrexham were non-league and they faced a Coventry side who were pushing for the playoffs. So it was a massive cup set and uh, one that definitely um, helped surge Wrexham to promotion that campaign. Well, we were looking to take victory over Coventry in our career mode. Um, and we would be off to the perfect start. Um, a great tackle from Alex Lowry. Um, even though he's a cam, he he tracked back and made a really good slide tackle. Luke Chambers, the Davidson left back, played Ryan Morris in down the left. He whipped in an early cross and Rocco Vatter with a beautiful volley as the Irishman grabs his first goal for the club. His third appearance, he's made two sub appearances so far in the league. This is his first start and he gets us off to the perfect start. As uh, obviously the cup competitions aren't a um, priority in terms of board objectives. They don't appear in the objectives. Um, in terms of cup competitions, the board want us to reach the last 16 in the FA Cup. 
But I'll always try and, you know, go on a little cup run if I think it's fit. But I will also make changes because the league is our priority. And speaking of the league, well, Coventry are unbeaten in the league and they're looking to stay unbeaten in their season as they equalise here just before half time. Tavares, um, fortunate how the ball came to him, but nothing fortunate in the finish. A nice composed finish and uh, nothing less than Coventry deserved. They actually battered us in the first half. But saying that, we would go into the break 2 1 up. It looked like Coventry were level. But in injury time in the first half, Rocco Vata with his second goal of the game. And it's another composed finish. Have we just picked up a little gem in Rocco Vata? Maybe, maybe. Before, um, if you take away Paul Mullins' goals from last season, we really didn't have many goal contributions for many other players. So we're definitely going to need uh, the team to help out and uh, contribute to more goals this season. Hopefully Vata could, uh, could provide that. But his second goal of the game, Tom Williams picking up an assist on his debut as well. And we would lead at the break. And then into the second half, Coventry continued their dominance. And Nathan Lloyd picking, uh, with two massive, massive saves um, as he kept us in the lead. We would go down the other end. Um, I think it was Tom Williams with another assist as Alec, uh, Alex Lowry comes in with a diving header. And I didn't actually think this had gone in at the time, but the keeper... He made he got so much contact on the ball and it still so, somehow stumbled in. So from nearly 2-2 to leading 3-1, Nathan Lloyd, big saves in the sticks. And uh, he's, he's not going down without a fight. He wants that number one spot. And I love that he wants to fight because his brother... Um, his brother was obviously on our books as well as a goalkeeper, but we did sell him because uh, Bryn wanted to uh, play first team football. We did sell him on, but uh, Nathan is willing to fight for his face, uh, fight for his place, and I absolutely love that from the youngster. Well, we would get a fourth. Tom Williams adding to his two assists to grab his first goal for the club on debut. A lovely ball played through from Ryan Morris, who I think grabbed his second assist of the game, or maybe even third. And Williams composed finish um, past the keeper. And then uh, Rocco Vata would grab his hat trick, uh, almost a identical one, uh, almost an identical goal to the first one. Ryan Morris with a swinging ball in from the left, Vata on the volley. This one wasn't as aesthetically pleasing as it came off the keeper, but they all count. And we would lead at 5-1 and the floodgates were now open at the race course ground. And Lloyd Humphreys making a, a, a quick appearance before he heads off to Belgium, forces the keeper into a save and we get a corner. We know how dangerous we were from corners last season or in the first two seasons, in fact. That's our first corner of this campaign and we score from it. Alex Lowry grabbing his second of the game and making it 6-1 Wrexham. And well, Coventry looking just for to save a bit of face here and uh, they force Nathan Lloyd into a smart save and Nathan Lloyd do you know what apart from the goal he's made really big contributions into this game that double save at 2-1 was huge it allowed us to go on and uh, grab the third fourth fifth and sixth goals and now uh, we're looking to make it seven in injury time oh my word Williams with a shot crashing off the bar attack isn't over yet Chambers to Lowry plays a 1-2 with Brown keeper saves ball still not dead Williams picks it up Finds Morris saved Lowry <laughs> at the I don't know what time fifth time of asking we get the seventh goal Alex Lowry makes it two hat tricks in one game I kind of felt bad for the keeper there he made about four good saves but we kept on peppering and Lowry grabs his hat trick to join Rocco Vata two new sign-ins two hat tricks Tom Williams on the score sheet as well what an emphatic win against a side who hadn't lost either of their open in two games that's a statement right there and sometimes you're, you're left with questions you know you, you rotate your squad for the cup games and you actually get a better performance than you know your strongest 11 but that's exactly why you make those changes because you say to the players who aren't starting every week look go out there make a name for yourself prove why you should be in the starting lineup and now the likes of Lowry, Vata, Maybe even Williams are uh, making me question whether they should start the next game. But it was a phenomenal performance. As we see here, uh, Middlesbrough looked a uh, loan to buy offer for Ryan Morris. We're not going to let him go as a couple comments came in uh, from Garen and from George saying that we should not sell our key players, the likes of uh, Evans, Mullen, Mendy and Elliot Lee. We, we spoke about them in the last couple of episodes, whether we should sell them, whether we should not. And um, Garen and George saying there, do not sell those players. So, Again, appreciate your comments massively. 
uh, they, th your your input always helps with the uh, with the career mode. So keep those comments coming as we reject a couple of bids. It's annoying because it's players that we want to sell, but to not realistic destinations. Hopefully those bids will come in before transfer deadline day as we see the Carabao Cup round two draw and we will face Blackpool, League One Blackpool in round two. Of course, just a few episodes ago, we turned over Blackpool at Wembley in the League One playoff final. They will be looking for revenge, no doubt. But that will be the end of today's episode. Episode 42, we kicked off life in the championship started off with a defeat but then won the welsh derby um to get three points on the board and then an emphatic win against coventry a massive massive win but make sure you drop some comments um for any more transfer recommendations if you think any of those players that starred in the cup game should start in the league in the next fixture um all i always always welcome your comments guys so keep them coming drop a like on the series if you're enjoying it and sub to the channel if you aren't already and i'll catch you in episode 43 very soon